Hi everyone and welcome back to a new Spring Boot Security episode. Today we are going to begin the form-based authentication episode. So we have done everything we could with HTTP authentication. We saw how we can save our users in the database. We saw how to configure HTTPS. And all of those things are still valid in the following episodes. But instead of using you know, HTTP basic to authenticate our users, we'll provide a custom login form and you know we'll change this approach and form based out is basically the most used type of authentication and it's really really important to understand how to configure it how to customize it and how to integrate it you know in spring boot applications now before we get started i would like to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel in order to stay tuned for more courses that will sharpen your programming skills also, before we begin, I would like to let you know that uh, you can find everything that is related to form-based security inside the forms directory of the Spring Boot Security uh, GitHub repository. So I try to split them up uh, in a way that it will be easier for you to follow this course and in a way that it will be easier for you to just grab uh, what you need and play with it. So we'll have a folder for HTTP basic, a folder for forms, we'll have a folder for GVT tokens. Uh, of course, we have the unsecured example, which is, you know, where we started. And I try to do this split up, like I said, you know, to keep things simple and to allow you to follow along this course in a very straightforward way. The first thing that we need to do to enable form based authentication is to create a custom login form. So we have to create a page where the user can enter his um, you know, credentials, username and password. And using those credentials, we have to provide authentication. And the first step is to actually create that login page. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to templates and we'll add a new HTML page. HTML file, we'll call it login. And in here, we need to add our custom HTML for the login form. Now, uh, I have written this already, so we'll save some time. I'll just copy and paste it. And then let's go through it step by step. So it's a simple HTML page. And the things that are interesting, for example, is this. So we have a form, okay? And the form's action is a post method to dash login, okay? So in order to authenticate, we need to uh, execute an HTTP post method to dash login, okay? And then we need to collect credentials. So we have an input of type text for the username and another input of type password for the password, okay? And now we have a button of type submit. So what it does is when you click this button, it will submit the form and when the form is submitted it actually executes that post method uh, that post request to dash login okay and we also have a couple of uh, time lift integrations here for example if the username and password are invalid or if we are already logged out you know we pass you know spring security gives us the chance to display these messages and to collect this kind of these kinds of warnings okay as a response Okay, but you know, you can pretty much do without those, but you know, just to have a really functional form, I've added this in, okay? So, nothing very fancy. I mean, it's just a lot of bootstrapping here and styles to make the form look pretty, but you know, you can style it however you want. The important thing is you need to have a form, you need to post it to dash login because Spring Security by default, you know, that's um, where it listens for this event. So. Uh, by default, when you make an HTTP request of type post to login, it knows to interpret, you know, username and passwords from your form data and to provide authentication for them. So it's a lot of convention over here. So the first convention is this, that in order to authenticate, you need to send your data to dash login using a post method. And also the username and password fields, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but they have ID equals username, name equals username, and this one has ID password, name, egal pa uh, name equals password. So it's these IDs and names are not chosen uh, at random, 
uh, th these are the inputs that uh, you know will be decoded when we send this form uh, data and it's important to name them like this in order to let Spring Security um, know how to extract those values. Now, of course, you can change the IDs and the names, but then you have to modify the Spring Security configuration. And we'll learn how to do that in our next episode. But just to start off really simple, you know, just name your fields, username and password, and send the um, uh, authenticate method to dash login, okay? So nothing really fancy about this form. Now that we have this page, we also need to create uh, you know, a route for it. So I'll go to projects, I'll go to the home controller, and we need to create you know, a, a mapping because we need to let our Spring Boot app that when we navigate to you know, our application that login, we need to let it know that it needs to return us this login page, this view, okay? So I'm going to create a new get mapping. Okay, it's going to be called login. So public string login and we'll return the login view. This is the name of our view. Okay, and notice that you now we have dash login using a get verb to return uh, the view and we have dash login using a post verb to actually perform the authentication. Okay, so we have the same name but different HTTP verbs. Okay, cool. Now let's fire up our application and let's check out if uh, this view gets displayed correctly. Cool, so our application started. I'll just fire up an incognito Chrome window. I'll go to local host 8443 uh, or was it um, localhost 8082 yeah and then we get redirected okay cool so now if we hit dash login we should be presented with the login form and this is our login form like I said pretty basic username and password nothing fancy about it okay now we have this form we can display it but of course you know if you try to enter some credentials and we hit the login page well nothing happens because um, well we do not you see we get this error request method post not supported and that's because we did not configure spring security to use form based authentication now uh, we still have Spring Security configured to use HTTP Basic, and we set up the custom login page. Uh, we set up, you know, everything uh, from a view perspective. But now, in order to make this authentication work, we also need to set up Forms authentication, and we'll see how we can do that in the next episode. Before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.